Hey what's up guys this is Aditya for Price Baba and today we have with us the Moto E second generation which uh, is an upgraded version of the original Moto E um, as for the processor is concerned it still is a Snapdragon 200 uh, clocked at 1.2 GHz but instead of uh, it being a dual core now it is a quad core processor now uh, looking at the price point of uh, roughly 7000 rupees uh, these for this phone is uh, mostly going to be picked up by college students who would really love gaming so we thought we'd do a quick gaming review of the phone but to start off we would uh, have a look at dead trigger 2 and how the game plays on the phone uh, the first thing that i would say is an advantage is the bigger 4.5 inch screen uh, it's much better than the older phone which only had a 4.3 inch screen uh, also it has a front facing speaker it is not stereo but it is uh, a single uh, speaker at the top um, as far as gaming is concerned i've been gaming on it for a while now and uh, i didn't notice uh, lots of frame drops uh, it's been uh, running fairly smoothly uh, i wouldn't expect it to perform as uh, flagships do but for the price i'm not honestly disappointed with the performance uh, what i'd also say is that the front facing speaker makes it better to for gaming because uh, you feel that the action is more realistic Quite good, no, no lag, no drop frames, quite smooth, engaging to play, the touch might get a little sensitive after a while. So also as you can see the game has auto detected that it's a low end device so the graphic details are low. <clears throat> there is no option for high because it knows the phone there is no possible way for the phone to play it. So we will try and run the game on medium settings and uh, would like to see how the phone performs. So medium now. So that we need to restart the game for the performance to take effect as you can see the graphics has been set to medium and because of which you can see that the textures are much better the gameplay looks much better but at the same time it lags a little as in Still decent, as in you get occasional drops, but other than that, the game is still playable. The processor, it seems, is coping very well with the change in game settings and quite handy for a phone that is priced around uh, 7000 bucks. I think this is quite decent for gaming. For college students, I don't think you'll be disappointed with this phone. I've been playing this game for uh, roughly two or three minutes. The phone does get a little warm at the top, the display is a little warm. And to continue with the gaming review, uh, we thought we'd put the Moto E through another game. So Real Racing 3 is one other game that requires uh, the GPU and the CPU to run in unison and puts quite a lot of strain on the phone. So let's see how the phone performs while running Real Racing 3. quite good no frame drops it isn't loading it at the highest resolution like you'd see on uh, probably the nexus 5 or the moto x <coughs> but it's fairly decent as in the game is playable the game does not give you any settings when it comes to graphic well you could change the graphic settings it pre-decides the setting based on the processor and gpu configuration so as you can see the graphic is not very detailed it's quite good the graphic is decent gaming is good it's playable you do not lose out on frames okay there was a little bit of frame drop over there 
but other than that quite smooth sailing so after playing a couple of games i can say that the phone performs uh, reasonably well for the price that we've paid for the phone uh, and so this was our first gaming review of the moto e gen 2 uh, i we hope you are happy with the review and uh, stay tuned for the an in-depth review of the moto e coming soon if you have any doubts about uh, the phone or if you have any recommendations on how we could improve our uh, reviews, uh, do put it in the comment section down below. And uh, don't forget to share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel for more such videos and app recommendations.